Welcome back to my channel, guys, and welcome to An End to Bitcoin Maximalism, Part 1, a series uh, that I hope will help bring an end to the point of view that Bitcoin is all that matters in the cryptocurrency space. So basically, today's video will be about uh, the belief that no, there's no market opportunity beyond Bitcoin, that every crypto investment outside of Bitcoin is a gamble and cannot be derived as a quality investment through fundamental analysis. In other words, Bitcoin is the only use of blockchain that makes sense. There is no other market opportunity for crypto besides Bitcoin. So this is, um, so this is the belief that Bitcoin, like uh, anything else you do in crypto is a gamble and doing research is a wasted uh, idea unless it's, uh, uh, in other words, there's, it's just a gamble. Everything else that happens besides Bitcoin is a gamble. But if you give research and effort, that's all. That's just a gamble. Um, that's the uh, what we're going to go over today. So, what question is important to us? Um, what do we care about as people who want to be successful in this space? Um, we want to know, is Bitcoin the best opportunity to grow our wealth in the crypto space? Um, because we often do compare ourselves to, when we judge crypto projects, you want to compare it to Bitcoin. I actually think that's a good idea. That shows how your performance is going. And I have been able to outperform Bitcoin from my research. So that means that my research is doing better than Bitcoin. Um, and so that's the question we want to know. Is Bitcoin the best opportunity to grow our wealth? And my answer is no. Uh, Bitcoin cannot. Now, I may I say Bitcoin cannot make small investors rich um, because I think that Bitcoin is getting out of the range of being able to make people with like let's say I think you know what Bitcoin is about thirty thousand dollars. A small investor is you know to me is someone with ten thousand dollars. So you can no longer afford one Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin is borderline what will get you rich in the long run. So Bitcoin is reaching a point where Bitcoin can no longer make a small investor, someone with $10,000 rich. Or, uh, and what I mean, what do I mean by rich? Well, I'm, I mean by financially independent, someone who doesn't have to work for someone else. They could take their money that they've earned and put it into uh, something that will have uh, some basic yield, the time value of money, and they can live off of that. So when Bitcoin's market cap is that of gold, about $7 trillion, uh, relatively speaking, um, it has reached its full potential for growth and will be a store of value rather than an opportunity to gain from growth. As Warren Buffett, one of the best investors in the past, said, I invest in entities that grow from value added or underlying uh, entitlement to real world revenue streams. So, you know, like real world assets that uh, produce revenue streams. Uh, at this point, when Bitcoin is about the size of the uh, gold, it will be considered a savings account, not an investment uh, that is like a risk investment that can grow. I mean, it is investment in the sense that, you, you know, a savings account is an investment. It will grow at a steady pace, the value added of deflation that is valuable, but it's not life changing growth. So when Bitcoin does mature, when Bitcoin does reach its store of value narrative, it will be like a savings account. And, you know, if you were told by your grandparents, you know, like my I was, you know, like they, they said, oh, if you save, you know, you can get financial independence. And that is true when you use real money and when your wages are in real money uh, because they won't be inflated away by the current uh, system that we have now. Our current system makes wage has a downward pressure on wages through the inflation. But I don't want to get too much into the weeds on that. Uh, but it's it's something called the Cantillion effect. And what it is, is, you know, you have this institution that releases money. And as it releases money into the system, all the resources move closer to the printer. And that uh, Cantillion effect, or Cantillon effect, I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. That Cantillon effect, it pools all the world's wealth to uh, a few people. But if you don't have this crazy system that we have and you have a money system that's stable like Bitcoin will bring, now saving money actually matters and the wages will stabilize at competitive rates. And so you actually will be able to save yourself to financial independence. Uh, so, you know, but so just stacking Bitcoin will not be life changing growth, but over time it will be. 
Um, but, you know, as Bitcoin matures, it's not going to be something that will be growing massively in value. Like it'll be growing at the time's savings value of money. So saving Bitcoin will be a wise strategy for those who have time on their side that spans decades. So, yeah, um, I can see Bitcoin as uh, being a good savings uh, place. And um, yeah, so I'm going to this is going to be my analysis of Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin. So this is the proof of my opinion. So, or the evidence for uh, that stance that I take. So this is where we are right now. And you can see this trend that Bitcoin is following. So I'm just extrapolating from the trend. And what I believe this is, is, you know, if Bitcoin was to go like this, um, it would be showing um, probably a failure of the money system. And I actually do believe that Bitcoin will outperform this in price in dollar terms. It'll probably go up like this. Um, but it will not be able to do that in purchasing power. I actually think this curve that I'm showing is relative to the dollar with a stable rate of inflation as it, it you know, the inflation was like 10% here, but that's getting too complex here. But yeah, it, the inflation rate's about 10%. And with that 10% inflation, it's still slowing down. So what that shows me is Bitcoin is reaching at today's dollars a price around 1 million or 1.8 million in today's dollars. That's where it's going to settle. Now, it might settle up here. You know, it might even, you know, this curve might be wrong and be it like up here, you know, and on this, um, you know, maybe it shoots like this. And so it'll be, uh, you know, up or even down by, you know, a factor of 10. But I, um, I, my prediction for Bitcoin is in today's dollars, one Bitcoin, my prediction is in uh, about 10 years, a Bitcoin will e equal about, you know, a wealthy, how a, 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 a beautiful house. Like one Bitcoin will be worth about, you know, a, a, a decently, like this house right here, like, like, you know, like around that value. You know, um, it's better to think of Bitcoin in terms of houses than dollars because that's what it will probably be worth. So that's where I think Bitcoin's going to settle in worth. And I do think it will have about a 10 year uh earnings in in deflationary effect that will happen from uh, Bitcoin from lost Bitcoins or from the growth of the economy and such. And given uh, scientific and technological process, everything is invisible 10 years out. So that's why I say this is what it'll be worth in about 10 years, because everything will change in the world in 10 years. You know, the world is changing quite rapidly. Um, so it, it's difficult to even imagine what a Bitcoin will be worth or what will will we'll be even be doing in ten years because the world is changing so rapidly, but yes, one the last thing I want to point out about this trend is that my per personal prediction is that in this round it looks like Bitcoin will be about one hundred eighty thousand. That's where I'm thinking this market trend is going to go this time, and you can also notice that each Bitcoin cycle is getting smaller, and I think that trend is going to continue if. Um, it follows this trajectory. We will. This will be the last 10x we see of Bitcoin. Will be this cycle, but um, I may be undershooting it, and I may even be overshooting it. But that these are the just as, from this extrapolation that I drew from this uh, logarithmic chart of Bitcoin price performance, and um, this is what I think will happen. So that is my prediction for Bitcoin. And I think it will never 10x again after that. It'll be, it'll go through a cycle of 3x, 2x, um, over, and, and, you know, over a 10 year period, it, it'll be a 10x, you know, but in a single cycle, it's the last 10x that it will experience. But then it'll become something moving it on a super cycle of like 10 years versus individual cycles because Bitcoin is slowing down. It's actually becoming a part of an established, uh, part of the system. And, and so thus, it will not have these crazy price, uh, price fluctuations. But another thing to be said, if there is a failure of the dollar, it will just take off price ex exponentially wise. What we're, think what we're talking about here is in today's dollars. Um, so the, that's where I see it going, is purchasing about one house. That's why I don't want to think in dollars, because you don't want to think about such a flawed instrument as fiat. Okay, so the next question that we have to ask ourselves is, is the opportunity outside of Bitcoin that can be derived from fundamentals that is not gambling? In other words, because I'm wasting my time here uh, on all my research if it's just 
if, if fundamentals don't lead to a higher probability of success, meaning my work and effort doesn't create a greater upper, um, a statistical probability that I will succeed. Everything is probabilities. So the reason I do research is so that it increases the probabilities that my investments perform. In other words, hard work equals higher probability of profits that can change your life. So, you know, like... Uh, Personally, I don't see the point of something like Litecoin. And um, to me, that looks like a gamble. So that does show that there's some gambling effect to this. But also, I have seen substantial performance from doing research. Like I said, I've been able to outperform Bitcoin. I have not been able to outperform Ethereum, however. But that's diverging across to a different story. Okay, so my answer is yes. Uh, hard work will lead to higher probabilities. So Bitcoin must be able to do anything. So... Um, what must be true? Bitcoin will be able to do anything blockchain is worth doing. That's one of the beliefs that a Bitcoin maximalist must believe. Uh, they must believe that Bitcoin will be able to do anything uh, blockchain is worth. Uh, any. A lot of Bitcoin maximalists believe that Bitcoin will be able to do anything blockchain is worth doing. And we're going to talk into the incentives of why, even if it was, why that wouldn't happen. Um, every blockchain developer who has made non-Bitcoin efforts. OK, so this is another point of insanity that I want to get to about uh, Bitcoin Maximus. So every blo uh, blockchain developer who has made non-Bitcoin efforts is wrong and wasting their time. Basically, um, those who make such claims have extremely high hubris. They're, they're individuals, by definition, they lack the ability to understand their own shortcomings. And it's true. I've noticed with a lot of Bitcoin maximalists that they are talking in absolutes as if they're 100% right. Um, to me, uh, the best investors, if you listen to some of the uh, best investors, um, uh, they always they don't talk in absolutes. They say, um, you know, I don't know is a common thing that they say. So often, they, you know, these people, these Bitcoin maximalists often talk in finalities, um, you know, with no room for admission of potential miscalculations. That doesn't look like a, it looks like they got rich by being lucky or being in a rich family, etc. Um, or, you know, who knows? This is this is that's way speculative on my part. But, uh, you know, the common theme amongst successful people is that they've made failures in the past and they lead to making them understand that miscalculations are part of the human condition. It's one thing to admit that you may be wrong. It is another state um, to state your thoughts as a fact. The former I have more respect for and um, and I and I give greater respect to. So, you know, like uh, the people who admit that they may be wrong are the ones that have I give better, bigger weight to. The best investors often say, I don't know, uh, I may be wrong, and this is the voice of experience, and that's what you will notice. So if someone's talking in absolutes, oh, Bitcoin's the only thing that matters, and, and they arrogantly project that, you might want to take that with a grain of salt. Everything um, else is someone trying to push a narrative. So supporting information, point number one, um, the rich Bitcoin maximalists have no incentive to think beyond Bitcoin. So this is another point I want to make. The, the rich, um, you know, like I was listening to a conversation, I was listening to a lot of these rich people talking about Bitcoin, and, you know, they talk about uh, derivatives and they say, uh, such as equities can be done on fidelity. We don't need Ethereum. I don't see the value added. You know, that's what they were saying about Ethereum. Oh, I don't see the point in this. And that's almost laughable to me. If you even uh, imagine for a second the possibilities that can be done with blockchain, it just shows an absolute ignorance regarding the understanding of, of what blockchain is capable of doing. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm creating this series. So rich people are right about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin solves a problem for the rich that it does not solve for average uh, people. So they are right. Bitcoin is is all that matters for them. If you're already rich, if you've already reached this point in life where you've made the money that you need to make, they are not trying to grow their wealth. They are trying to preserve their wealth. And that's what Bitcoin does. Bitcoin helps preserve. But that's why they get so defensive. A lot of these people will buy Bitcoin. They don't want to change their mind about anything in the future. They don't want any potential threat they just want to preserve their wealth, and that's what Bitcoin does for them. Um, so necessity is the mother of invention. Einstein was right when he said, you know, people will believe the things that they need to believe to exist in their in their life. And so if, you know, like uh, 
there's going to be more people like this. In other words, uh, there, you know, people believe the things that uh, help them get by. Uh, and since Bitcoin is the only blockchain that serves them, they don't see uh, the reason for the others to exist. There will be more. I'm telling you that many more rich people will think that there's nothing beyond Bitcoin. They will try to convince the public that do not look past Bitcoin because they see n they have no need for anything else. They've already established their wealth. They're looking to preserve it. And Bitcoin will preserve it. And that's what Bitcoin does. Um, but that's what they will uh, believe. So what I'm saying is this is the Bitcoin will um, is the only thing that matters camp. And this is the Bitcoin uh, is not the only thing that matters camp. In reality, the, both of these people are right. Bitcoin is all that matters for the rich. They don't need to look for making wealth anywhere else. So they're right. For them, Bitcoin is all that matters. And they're just expressing their reality. So they're not necessarily wrong. They're right for themselves. Whereas the people that are going to build something like Ethereum or Polkadot, they are right about building the world of tomorrow. So these are some of the, the top Bitcoin maximalists that I, I want you to be aware of. All of these people have expressed that, that everything besides Bitcoin is uh, garbage. That's what they all say. Um, and they're all very intelligent people. And I listen to them. Uh, I listen to all of them talk and I will absorb the information from them. Uh, I think they're all very intelligent people. And I think they are right about their respective realities. I think the mistake they're making is that they do not need to grow their wealth, but other people do. Okay, and and um, so they're not lying. They they can't see past their own worldview, and they talk in absolutes. They're seeing um, Bitcoin as it serves them, but not how uh, the other altcoins could set up a potentially new and completely different world. Hell, heck, that could be um, a you know that could be that's threatening to the idea that you buy Bitcoin and then you don't have to care about anything else. These other blockchains are going to absolutely change the game. They're going to change the world, and so that makes you know them. That if you're already rich, you're going to be a little worried because you know everything's changing, and that's what going blockchain is going to do. Um, so beware, because their incentives do not match yours. To the rich, nothing but wealth preservation matters. All else is risk to them. It's one of the reasons when people are extremely wealthy, they don't want the world to change too much. Many of them, because they're afraid of you know having to you know like losing their wealth by putting it in the wrong things, etc. So they have a high incentive to push Bitcoin as all that matters because to them, it's true. So conclusion, people are shaped by their needs and desires. Um, if listening to someone, ask yourself if the technology they are uh, if the technology that they are talking about benefits them and if the technology they are against is threatening them. And I would argue that all the other blockchains threaten these people because it, like once again, it's going to change the world in such a way, it's going to be hard to be relevant if you don't stay involved. It's going to be hard to be the richest person in the world if you don't understand like how equities work you know, in 10 years, which is Ethereum, what Ethereum is going to disrupt or Polkadot is going to disrupt. So point number two is smart people working hard, spending time in a related field have more weight than those that are rich but are not building anything. So people who are rich but aren't really building anything, that they're not investing in anything, they're not going to really know what blockchain is really capable of. Those who are builders are going to be the ones that really know. So this is one thing I wanted to point out about the human lifespan and human net worth. So, you know, this is the curve of a human's uh, productivity and wealth over time. Um, and you have people before they have uh, success, and that would be many of my viewers, in, including, and I, you know, I, I'm getting to the point where I could become like almost financially free or financially free. And then there's going to, you know, where people are reaching the maximum rate of change, and then they climax when in older age um, in their wealth journey. And this could be a personal financial age, not just their only age. You could be at any age in the spectrum as you're accumulating wealth. You know, you can make all the right decisions here. Like, for instance, the guy that made, um, that uh, chicken company, uh, you know, uh, he started in his in his fifties. So, um, but what you want to know as an investor is, you know, this is the this worldview is what you want to know. But you can't do that when a person's there; it's undeterminable. You cannot determine such uh, sources um, because they, you know, you know, they're finding the path that you know of that financial change. So the best source is people in this part of the curve um, who are in specifically the same industry, the fastest rate of financial growth. Um, 
usually in expansive industries. So the people in the blockchain space that are reaching the maximum rate of change of their own personal net wealth are the people that you want to listen to. Those are going to be the best opinions for um, growing your wealth, especially in crypto. And unreliable are people who've already made their wealth and they made it in some under um, some under some other industry and they're reflecting on their past. And once again, um, if you read some books on that, human reflection isn't necessarily accurate. So they're and they're also further away from who they were when they made those right decisions. This one is closer to who they were when they made the right decisions. Um so, you know, like this would be like Ivan on tech, for example, in my opinion, um, he, you know, talking about coming in the blockchain is what makes you wealthy because Ivan on tech is in this part of his life. Um, and he's saying coming in the blockchain. And um, that's exactly the same thing I would say. Um, so, you know, and these people are not in expansive industries. Usually they've already made their wealth in the past. So this is some, this is what you want to consider from the people that you will listen to in the future or who you listen to. So who should you pay attention to? Those who are experiencing the most growth uh, financially today, specifically in the industry that you want to grow from. And those who started from nothing are even better because, you know, many of us do start from nothing. And pay attention to all of those who succeed, but understand perspective as stated ab above. So, you know, in other words, you can pay attention to these people. You want to pay attention to them because they're very wise people and you want to take in their points of view as consideration. So um, every blockchain developer who has, has made non-Bitcoin efforts is evidence enough for me. So for me personally, all these blockchain developers that are saying that blockchain can be used for other use cases, I've seen many of them are smarter than me. And so um, one of the things I've learned in life is that, you know, and this is a key memory from my own personal experience. When I invested in Bitcoin, I didn't understand it at the time, but I trusted people smarter than me knew what, what they were talking about. In many cases, I don't need to know everything. I need to know enough. That is the key point. If you get like one thing from this video is that you don't need to know everything. You only need to know enough. Let me say that again. You do not need to know everything. You just need to know enough to reach your objectives. And that is the goal. So I, I trusted people who knew more than me. So study people like Vitalik Buterin, Gavin Wood, Brennan Eich, and Alex Mashinsky. Um, this guy is the creator of JavaScript, okay? A programmer. He's likely to know cryptocurrency more. Uh, Alex Mashinsky, uh, voice over IP. So if you ever use Zoom, he's the guy who created the software for that. Um, Gavin Wood created Ethereum and Polkadot, as well as Vitalik Buterin, the creator of uh, Ethereum. All of these people are highly technically competent in computers. All of them are technically competent in general, and they are more likely to understand the technology. And they're all wealthy, and they've made, they're at this point in the growth curve of their lives. Well, you know, Alex Mashinsky's up here, but he's extremely competent in technology, and he is in highly in the highly expensive industry. Um, and, you know, he's growing his wealth through crypto, like he's mega, you know, mega, mega, mega rich guy. OK, so all of them are builders. OK, but that's the key takeaway. They're all builders. That's why their opinions matter. OK, so point number three, um, there is diminishing incentives to build specialized utility on Bitcoin. So human incentive is an important component of this as well. So what motivates people, uh, you know, th their goals, money or the change the world for the better. Those are the two things that will really motivate people. Um, you know, usually money to do some other purpose or to change the world for the better. So, you know, if there's some purpose like helping their family or whatever, usually they're going for money so that they can do that. Um, or, ch you know, it could be considered changing the world for the better through their immediate experience. But these are the things that generally motivate people, changing the world for the better or money. And, there's only one, you know, out of all of these instances that I'm going to lay out, only one of them really comes out in the favor of Bitcoin, and that's people paid to work on Bitcoin. Um, you know, as Bitcoin goes up in value, those people who are rich from Bitcoin can pay people to work on Bitcoin. Um, but there is more incentive for people to start their own projects. That's There's more opportunity there than if someone gets paid in Bitcoin. You know, even if it's one of these mega rich uh, Bitcoin heirs, uh, there's going to be more opportunity uh, to just launch your own project. And it's going to be that for, way for a while. 
Um, Bitcoin um, incentive structure cannot go against miners. All, okay, so another thing, even if people are paid to write great code for Bitcoin, if it goes against the incentive structure of miners, it's not going to happen. And we could overgo, we're going to overgo that in video two, the next video in Bitcoin structure. So I'm not going to go too much deeper in that. Um, you know, these people cannot be bought. And so they're not going to be, you know, the people who are rich from Bitcoin cannot buy them. They're just going to utilize the most strategic methods to achieve their goals. Um, and, you know, we'll go over that in video two as well. Uh, why Bitcoin is not necessarily the most strategic blockchain to do everything. Um, they have no loyalty to any project, only loyal to results. Uh, Bitcoin's energy design is wasteful, um, you know, and so that's another thing that these people that want to change the world for the better might not like. Bitcoin is highly inefficient method. Proof of work is the most expensive, wasteful, trust providing method. Um, once again, we're going to go over that in video too. Um, so once again, to answer the question, um, what is it that blockchain is offering? You know, like... Um, so like we're going over this whole video, this whole this particular video is about uh, the market opportunity um, outside of Bitcoin. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that blockchain does in a general sense that Bitcoin will not be able to be specialized for? Um, so basically, blockchain is just a trust environment. That's all it is. Um, and so it, any all blockchains are all blockchains are selling trust. You have an event. It goes through trust and has an action. That's all blockchains are doing. Uh, they are selling you this, and they have their fees and the and their the cost of tr trust. So all blockchains sell trust. Okay, all blockchains sell trust. That's what they do. That's what they're selling. They're selling you a trust environment. And what trust does is it's fair, it's untampered, it's reliable behavior, it's verifiable, it's the same for all users, and it's hacker proof. That's what trust is. Um, if, if an individual does it, uh, a centralized entity does it, they won't, you can't have any of these um, because an individual could hack it or be, uh, make a mistake and allow for a hacker to have it or you know, it could be tampered. Um, you know, and so you can't trust it. You can't trust if one entity is in control of it. It could be uh, tampered with. Um, but you can get reliable behavior by having multiple parties involved and all of them running a software to agree on something. That's what creates that trust environment. So, you know, that's what creates that verifiability. An individual can change it so it can't be verifiable. So basically, you can't, under, you can't believe something that comes from one person or one group of people um, because they could change it in, in the future. Um, and, you know, when, that is something that we'll get deeper into in videos two and three. But Bitcoin is the most expensive trust provider method. Um, so Bitcoin is also the first tr trust provider method, but it's also the most expensive. And this might hurt Bitcoin in the long run. And we'll, if you want more of that, we're going to talk about it more in video two, because um, this video is already getting pretty long. And we're going to go over examples of the trust computer in the series finale in video four. So if you're interested in um, seeing more examples of blockchain and um, the, how this trust computer and how this trust technology will be used, or if you want to see uh, Bitcoin structure um, and how it could be hurt or, and how its, its structure, its expensive method is beneficial and uh, expensive at the same time, uh, you know, the pros and cons, in other words, of Bitcoin, then you'll be excited for video two. Um, but that's all for this video, um, you know, talking about the overall market situation for um, all Bitcoin and the other blockchains. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And uh, I look forward to coming up with the video number two for you guys.